And if you're getting tired of all these primaries and voting and democracy as a whole, uh, there's good news. There's an alternative. Fascism. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a word I've heard my whole life, but I didn't really know what it was. So the other day, I did some in-depth research by Googling it at a stoplight. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I found a list of... That's not even me. I don't even know how they got that. I don't even know how they got that. And I, uh, I found a list of some of the defining features of fascism, including a cult of action, a celebration of aggressive masculinity, an intolerance of criticism, a fear of outsiders, intense nationalism, and resentment at national humiliation. Now, it's hard to keep all those things in mind, but I've come up with a handy mnemonic device. You just listen to things said by Donald Trump. I get things done better than anybody. They're fed up with those guys back there, the media. They are the worst. <laughs> They're the worst. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose any voters. A total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. He's walking out like big high fives, smiling, laughing. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. We never win. We just don't win. We are going to make America great again. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> myself. <laughs> no, because it all lines up so perfectly, doesn't it? Yeah. It almost, it almost kind of stops being funny as you're watching it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still funny for me because I have a backup plan country. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, and you're all welcome to join. Don't get me wrong. You're all welcome to join. And now, I, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is a fascist, but even just in the last few days, he said and done some things that make it a pretty fascist week. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, I know you guys are all excited for Fascist Week 2016, so let's get right into it. Our first look from the House of Trump, a name that came up repeatedly this weekend, the Benito Mussolini. The Republican frontrunner was confronted with questions Sunday about retweeting a quote from fascist leader Benito Mussolini. Now, it reads, quote, it is better to live one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. Now, now, to be fair, I don't blame Trump for retweeting a quote he didn't know was from the father of fascism who was also Nazi Germany's greatest ally. I don't blame him for that. Uh, and I, I, no, I have to play devil's advocate here, you know, because that's not an obvious fascist quote. I mean, sure, it could be a fascist motto, but I'm sure it's also on the wall of every CrossFit gym in America, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, personally, I'll take living 100 years as a sheep every time. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> No, I mean, it's a really nice life. You chill in a field all day, you eat some grass, and you really like grass because you're a sheep. You're a sheep, you're just living your life. One day as a lion, you're just gonna be chasing down and killing things, it sounds exhausting, and then at the end of the day, you're gonna get killed by some <laughs> dentist from Minnesota. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, hashtag never forget. <laughs> I'm going with sheep. But here's the thing. Once you do know that it's a Mussolini quote, then at that point, you should probably care. Do you like the quote? Did you know it was sure. Mussolini? It's okay to know it's Mussolini. Look, Mussolini was Mussolini. It's okay to know. It's a very good quote. It's a very interesting quote. And I know it. I saw it. I saw what... And I know who said it. Uh, but what difference does it make, whether it's Mussolini or somebody else? You want to be associated with a fascist? No, I want to be associated with interesting quotes. Well, you got your wish, Donald Trump. <laughs> there were so many things happening in that interview. First of all, why does it take you so long to think? Do you want to be associated with fascists? Mmm. <laughs> why is there an mmm? And then he goes, oh, it doesn't make a difference. What difference does it make who said it? It makes a huge difference. Take the phrase, take any phrase. Uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, and try again. Smart advice, right? Yeah. But did you know that that's a Hitler quote? Yeah. Well, it's not. <laughs> But you see, for a second there, everyone in this room was like, oh, no! <laughs> I've said that to my child! <laughs> it's everything. So, Donald Trump isn't bothered by retweeting a quote from the man who invented fascism, but uh, how about endorsing a key feature of fascism itself? You know, in America, if you're a journalist, you're protected from getting sued by politicians for reporting on them. And in that spirit, the House of Trump presents the next look, media censorship. 
One of the things I'm going to do if I win, I'm going to open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. We're going to open up those libel laws. Now, now this is especially concerning because if this man had his way with libel laws, then the media would never be able to report on President Trump's shady business dealings or his dubious policies or the fact that he wants to bang his daughter. Um, <laughs> oh, don't forget. <laughs> Donald Trump wants to bang his daughter. <laughs> and so with that said, it's now on to our final most daring look from the House of Trump. An edgy twist on the classic white sheet as worn by former Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizard David Duke, who recently told his followers to vote for Trump. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. Would you just say unequivocally you condemn them and you don't want their support? Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. Okay. I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I don't know any... Honestly, I don't know David Duke. I don't believe I've ever met him. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. I've got to give props to Jake Tapper. Do you see him like, just holding himself? I mean, okay, I'm just talking about uh, the Ku Klux Klan, and uh, you know when he's going, I can't believe this is even my job. <laughs> How am I having to say this to a candidate? And also, Trump needs to find out more about the KKK? <laughs> really? The KKK? Like, Trump is there going, I mean, sure, that, that could stand for anything. Like, uh, I don't know, Cool Kids Club. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Who am I to turn down the support of Cool Kids? <laughs> oh, I, oh, and by the way, uh, Donald Trump, we know you know who David Duke is uh, from that time you were on TV. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. This is not exactly the people you want in your party. Yeah. And the irony is, I think there's a lot of Republicans saying that now, too. 